and testing one two three welcome everyone thanks all for being here it is 7 32 here in warsaw i believe it's 6 32 in london and i am here with francis bull welcome francis thank you very much for coming on the show it's been great meeting you and speaking with you Thank you so much for Lori for inviting me over first of all and thank you for allowing the conversation to happen. That is pretty long overdue in all honesty. Why, why do you feel it's long overdue? What? Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. Um, it's it's the way uh, it's the conversation basically that I've had uh, with many different uh, Christians basically. Uh, especially the non-evangelicals and sorry the non-denominational evangelical Christians and uh, uh, like the Protestants. Like when I had a conversation about things uh, which you have opened my eyes to uh, through especially all the topics that we know Martin Luther and some few other tidbits. In that, in all honesty, that was I think particularly <laughs> what led me to question and start asking these things within myself and be intellectually honest uh, that if I can question something, I should question this too and look, why am I in this and why am I there? So not just for the sake of following it, but also looking at my reasonings of why am I following it? So All right. Understood. this is what made it along with you. Okay, not good. So yeah, so hello everyone. Uh, we've got XYZ. Thank you very much. Great to see you, XYZ. Romeo, Emilio Sanchez, you were second. Guys, it's amazing. I, I was never first when it came to commenting on a video. Now, lately, <laughs> I have been the first to comment and put the comment first. I'm getting good at this. I'm getting really good at this, but at least on this channel, I'm, I'm pretty good. So Dr. Obvious is fifth. Welcome. Uh, we've got Ferox Ministerium. Hola, senores, he says. Dr. Muta, Anna Katana, sixth, welcome. Uh, Ark for the Floods, and we've got Roseanne, welcome. Isaac Rivera, Sandro Correa, and the Lloyd Detts. Yes, that's great. <laughs> Dino Dennis, Dr. Jonathan Gemmel, great to see you. Um, and Noah Act, hola. So welcome, everyone. So thanks all for being here. Uh, so Francis Bull, briefly, is an ex-Muslim. He is Pakistani. He left Islam. I'm, that's right. And, that is right. Yes. And um, yeah, I don't, obviously I won't say more than that. I guess I mean, it's up to you. What, what you want to reveal? And uh, you first embraced Protestantism for a while, and then you decided to leave that, and you've gone, I believe, to Greek Orthodoxy. Yes, that is and, correct, sir. And you've also spent time at Speakers Corner. You've met many of the the YouTube personalities that we know. At Speaker's Corner, you've spoken with many of the apolog apologists there. And and also, oh, you know what? I need to bring up that link of your recent video. I'll also advertise that to everyone. Let me find that and um, so that I can post that for everyone to have a look at your video, your debate with this guy, because that's a really interesting, interesting talk that I think people would, would, find, would find enlightening. So, yeah, um, let's see. Where do we begin? Let me put this up here. Let me do a list of questions. Okay, so everyone, let me bring this up. I'm going to change screens. I'm going to share something. Right. This was my first exposure to Francis Bull. There's a video here by Revelation 2213 called Speaker's Corner. Ex-Muslim Francis tells Muslim straight why he left Islam and things get heated. And they certainly got heated. I'm going to drop the link in the chat for you. And this is Francis. And uh, and then, of course, this Muslim comes along. And now, I'll give you my brief view. I, I wrote to Francis about this. And I this guy gave me the creeps. This Muslim. There's something threatening about him. When I watched him for the entire period, I didn't... I was doing an analysis. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this is a serious thousand-yard stare by this guy. And when I was working security... This behavior, I mean, this guy was triggering me the whole time, right? He was triggering my alarm bells. It was like constantly, I was like, this man's a threat. This man's a threat. And there was something about him that, that was really unnerving to me. So this is the kind of person I would put, I would, I would consider this person to be an imminent threat. And I would, I would treat them in that regard. There was something about him. And I felt that he wanted to, the guy with the glasses, you had this guy. 
and I felt that he wanted to do something violent. But that was the impression I had. I did a I did a detailed analysis. I sent it to Francis, and Francis was very cool and calm with him. Eventually, he went and got witnesses so that there were other people to witness the discussion before it got out of hand. Crazy eyes, exactly. This guy had crazy eyes. And yeah, and that was it. So Francis, maybe you want to, this was my first introduction to you. So maybe tell us a little bit about, about this. Uh, yes. Um, I was, the initial conversation was between me and this brother on the left, basically. Uh, his name is Sean. And me and him were having a conversation, this Irish guy who was an ex-Catholic, uh, now a very staunch uh, apparently self-confessed, non-denominational, evangelical Christian. Uh, me and him were discussing the denominational things in regards to why is he non uh, non-denominational Christian and why am I a Greek author? We were having a very uh, soft uh, conversation with each other. There was no like ex like sort of extreme bashing each other. It was more like just having a friendly discussion of why I believe this and why I think you're wrong. And then he's telling me why I believe this. And then why why does he think that I'm wrong? But this Muslim came in and I want to hear your conversation. Uh, I want to know and learn about Christianity. I'm like, mm, no, there's something really more odd here. Because he, first of all, the way he was speaking to you, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. I, like I'm, I'm looking at his behavior and I'm scanning his whole uh, look and his whole body language. Uh, over there and it gave me a very freaky sort of you know when you have that freaky intuition about someone and you immediately say okay this person is not who he claims to be uh, this right. someone is is going to come with an attack but also he has some sort of like a deep vengeance within himself I'm being polite with him constantly throughout all the way like I'm putting his bag uh, on the tripod so he doesn't have to hold it I'm giving him a sort of like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm making sure for the first hand that I'm not being too honestly, too overly nice with him. Just have that sort of a barrier where you don't step on my toes. I don't step on my, you don't step on my toes and I will not step on your toes. But there is sort of a, you have to keep your distance and you have to make sure that you do not, uh, you do not have the chance to act with me. But Certain certain elements in that whole entire conversation throughout, as anyone who has seen it, I think they will come to a realization where he was uh, just there to bash Christianity. He was not there to learn. Like He's not trying to seek any truth as he claimed, in all honesty. He was just trying to say that uh, I have the truth. Uh, I know you guys are wrong. Because what can God? How can God be like this? How can this be like this? How can this be like this? Yeah. So it's just asking me stupid questions, like just the same TikTok Muslim questions, or same like how can a God? How can this happen? Like all the same stupid stupidity in all honesty, and that's why I was like, you know what? What are you trying to do? And then we come to the age of Aisha, then I'm like, uh, like, are you serious? You're following? You're following a prophet who done this? You think that that's more clearer to you than anything else. You as you you say that I'm better human being because Islam is this and this, and we believe Jesus to be this and this, and so we are good because we side with you. So what are you trying to play here? That's why I caught him out on right. many things, and after that, uh, my switch went off, and I was like, boom, that's it. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Understood. So that was my first introduction to him. I've reposted the link. Apparently, the first link didn't work. I've just re reposted the link a handful of times for those who want to have a look. It's an interesting conversation. I said, the guy creeped me out. There, there was something. Mm. My senses said this man is a threat. I, I felt yeah. he was dangerous. So so and that's that's my professional background kicking in. So yeah, on this. So, so moving on to um, before we get back to Speaker's Corner, um, I have a list of questions which I thought would be interesting, and you can maybe tell us your story on the basis of this, just to give people sure. an idea. Um, I mean, your background, you were in Islam for, for much of your life, and then you and your family decided to leave. I mean, what, what led to that? So, um, I think what I'll start with is basically um, question number nine and question number one are quite, uh, what do you call it? interlinked with each other yeah. uh it wasn't it wasn't me and my family who left islam it was 
first of all, my sister, who actually started having a, a actual rant and row uh, with some with someone on Twitter, apparently. And then on Twitter, I don't know who she had this rant with, but I think it was probably uh, someone. I think I think it was probably David Wood. So when she started looking at him, and then she started realizing and uh, had sort of like a back and forth washed everything, took her time. And it was Ramadan of 2017 where she was like, came down to my mum and said, I'm out. I'm out of this cult. But my background is where we are very, very, we were never devout Muslims. We were very much of a cultural, cultural Muslim. It was like just 27 years of my life being a Muslim. I didn't have that stronger affiliation uh, with, you know, religiosity like a lot mm-hmm. of people would have from Pakistan because my upbringing and my entire lifestyle was way too different. It was more modern. It was more of a cultural Muslim. It's like, okay, Eid's here. Uh, then the second Eid is here. Okay, that's it. So, you know, you're just, mm-hmm. you're just in that, you're just playing in the background. There's no, like, that sort of conversation where I say that, yeah, I was a very devout Muslim. Like I tried, like I used to pray this uh, prayer for the travel or prayer for before entering the toilet, but prayer after coming out of the toilet, all that stupidity, all that jazz, was not me. I was very much of a, like a very normal, normal cultural Muslim that you'll come across on the street. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my background is very diverse. So I'm not ethnically, ethnically pure anything. I have a very ancestral, a uh, Persian ancestry alongside Middle East and next. So my upbringing in Islam was, was very limited because the school that I went to was very, uh, it was a very British school. So I never had that sort of a, a, a background where there's Islam in my life, within my family or with my, uh, you know, like with my friends. We were very open and honest and had deeper conversations about things with each other. Uh, like in my family, I had atheists while growing up. In my family, I had agnostics. So I never, you know, in that perspective, in all honesty, I never had that affiliation with Islam like a lot of people have in, in West or in East. But in West, I see it a lot more because I think they have this sort of a complex in them and they have to show their religiosity all the time in order to right. feel like a Muslim. But in East, they don't have that mentality. In East, because they already there's a preconceived idea that yeah, because this person's brown, this person looks like this now, and they're living here, and they already be Muslim. This is how the mindset in the East works. But in I think in the West, they have to just set themselves apart from everyone. They have to act in a way that you can just tell it's a Muslim. Like supposedly, I have a joke. Uh, <laughs> it's not a good joke, uh, but. If you see anyone with a grey trackie and has some sort of like an um, has this rough look with them, and they have a beard, and they're walking with this with this most laid back uh, what call it, I do one can have, that's probably a Muslim. If someone's a well kept person, there's some there, there's an issue here or what's happening with this brown person. Literally, that's what I see in the West. That it sounds bad, but. Mm-hmm. But that that's my honest opinion. And as for, uh, yeah, sorry, coming back to the story where my mum, uh, oh, yes, you're pulling this up. Yes. Um, exactly. So this is going Use to the lavatory. lavatory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's, that's what I would say. If people only knew uh, the... Islam about sitting and peeing like a woman uh, is necessary for a man because Muhammad said so because he was so um, so puritan about things that he wanted to, things be done in a certain way which yeah, he says, wants them to before entering say in the name of Allah oh Allah I take <laughs> refuge in you from demons male and female <laughs> so and then after praise be to Allah who rid me of the hurt and gave me health mm. Enter first with the left foot and depart with the right foot. Yeah. And this is recommended outdoors as well, although I'm not sure how you know where the toilet is, but okay, fine. So that, yeah. yeah. So, so t- <laughs> tell me then, why was your sister open to, to learning more and then leaving Islam on the bait? Well, why was she so open to 
thinking through and then making a rational decision. Because uh, because if she is someone who's educated, she's working around around the world, like uh, for for the job she's in and the job she was in, basically. Um, someone has a very open mindset. So someone who travels the world and someone who has done a lot of things in her life, uh, not not like a culture, not like a particular devout Muslim, but a very cultural Muslim. So when she has seen those things, and then especially she's called half half, you know, like. Her testimony is half of a man, and then she's looking at Muhammad, like in Islam, the way women are treated, like you're a property. She's like, no, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fall for the stupidity. So this is what her reasonings were, the basic reasoning, which I don't know the full understanding on. But this is particular reason that she gave my mum, and then she just gave my mum to watch all the stuff that she saw, and then she said. She drank water in front of my mom and she said, I'm out of this cult. That's it. And my mom wow. didn't even question. My mom was like, yeah, you know what? Let's see why you were out. My mom started watching. Um, after a couple of days, she left. I was the last one in my family because uh, I wasn't living with my family. Uh, so I went there and my mom already kept a surprise with for me. And she said, we just want you to see something. Uh, I don't know what happened, and I spent all the time there just looking at things which could not resonate with me, like especially uh, Surah sixty-five, verse four. Mm-hmm. Um, the the uh, the divorce uh, period for a, yeah. a woman who's not even had a a prepubescent girl is three months, or someone who's worked with children, someone who's uh, worked with survivors, and being my, myself one. I can't resonate with that. I can't say like that's okay. Like how can it how can I reason with this? And then looking more and more into extreme stuff in Islam, calling everyone um nudges, uh like unclean. Or yeah. everyone filthy. unclean, like everyone's filthy, like all of these are all of these heathens are just not humans. Uh they are filth, they are the worst of the creatures, they have this and this. And like, this is creation of God saying, this God is saying to his own creation that you're the worst of the creatures yeah. uh, without giving a context. Just just because you are not following his religion is making you something bad. Yeah. Something was questionable for me. Yeah, I just and, want to show the audience. Um, this is the yeah. Sharia, oh, Sunni yes. Sharia on 65.4, a woman's post-marital waiting period. So it's post-marital, right? Yes. And it says here, a waiting period is obligatory for a woman divorced after intercourse, whether the husband and wife are prepubescent, have reached puberty, or one has reached puberty and the other has not. That's the Sharia. Yeah. So post-marital intercourse, and intercourse means copulation. So... This is the meaning. There is no waiting period for women divorced before having had sexual intercourse with a husband. But if they have had sex, even if prepubescent, that is explicit here. That that 65.4 refers to children, minors. And I can show other mm. references. I mean, this will suffice for now. So, Exactly. And then, um, and then looking at his actions, I uh, started reading Hadith. Uh, the... <laughs> The stupid hadiths that uh, some people have come up with, uh, yeah. like uh, this man has come up with, like especially dunking the fly into the tea again because one 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 of the uh, one wing has, has the a, disease and the other wing has the one. cure. Exactly, like <laughs> what sort of stupidity is this? And then listening about like he has, he has some people who he wanted to cure of a disease to drink camel urine. I'm like, you guys bash India. For all this jazz, right? And you yourself have this for all this time, and I did not even know. I'm like, what on earth is happening here? So right. looking at all these, uh, all these things within Islam, and trying to come into an understanding where the creation of a uh, creation of a baby uh, inside the womb, Islam gets it completely wrong. So looking at all these things is making me realize, okay, I've studied in a school where I've been told what to think and how to how to be and especially make sure question everything. Don't just fall for things because 
because they're just good for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's where these sort of things came into the play because, yeah, one thing that I would have to say that in 2014, uh, early months, I think probably February or March, I did hire a scholar uh, to teach me Islam. Mm -hmm. But because of his words were very, because I still remember his words because they're so, because they're so true for all the Muslims when I ask these things to them. They say one thing to me right, quite clearly. Use your heart. Do not even think of using your brains. Otherwise, the shaitan, the Satan, is gonna uh, is gonna make you leave Islam. This is insane. You know, thing. you know, exactly. this is in the Sharia. It's, it's actually right in the front of this Sharia manual. That mm. this reminds me of my favorite reformer, Martin Luther, oh, yes. who says the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Was Martin Luther somehow a Muslim brother? Man, you know what? You know what? I I am open to anything these days at this yeah. point with that man. If I find that he used to kill cats and yes. fry them and eat them with raw babies, I would not be surprised at this point. I, but just just so by the way, this is a quote from or this is from Tabari, the great biographer of Muhammad and historian, the greatest one of the second greatest historian possibly of Islam. Mm. Uh, Layla bint al Khatam, right? So she she comes to Muhammad and says, "Marry me." She asks. He tells the Prophet to marry mm -hmm. her. She says, "Marry me," and he Muhammad says, "I accept." So she goes back to her people and says, "The Messenger of Allah has married her." And they said, "What a bad thing you have done! You are a self-respecting woman, but the Prophet mm -hmm. is a womanizer. Get an annulment." So she went back to the Prophet and asked him to revoke the marriage, and he complied. Because oh, Muhammad is a woman. <laughs> this is Tabari. <laughs> <laughs> this is volume nine of Tabari's history. Insane. See, see, Brother Lloyd and everyone, all the people in looking, watching this right now, you should all know Islam itself kills itself. That's the beauty of Islam. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So, yes. So, yeah. When, so, so, okay. So, you left Islam, right? Your family left Islam. I mean, mm. you felt you had good reason. Yes. Where did you go next? Where did you end up? I, d I, I just ended up just not not being into any religion whatsoever. I just became, I think I had my atheist face, which was quite stupid. Because I, when I look back at that few months that I was an atheist at the yeah. beginning, like, okay, there can't be any God or anything. I'm just going to give up. Just literally, like, be a good person and that's it. Uh, then I started reading into like the Richard Dawkins, the God delusion, uh, read a few pages of it. And I got so bored that I just chucked the book in the bin, didn't even give it to a charity shop. I was like, it was not worth it because like, how can spider you know, this and be like this and with the rock and like this and with the bits like this. I'm like, um, no, you know what? This is, this is crazy. Like I can't, I can't be an atheist because I, I know that this has to be, that you know what? Like I said, I say we're in great good size, uh, which is something cannot just come out of nothing. Literally. Yeah. That's it for me. And that's why I turn it more into agnosticism, uh, which I had to believe where there is a God, but I don't know what religion we're fall into. You that know, was it for me. When, after I saw this, this video, Zeitgeist, I don't know if you remember Zeitgeist. The audience mm. probably knows Zeitgeist. I was one of the very first people. I was a subscriber to the list before the video came out. And I was one of the very... I prepaid for the video. So I was one of the... I funded that, <laughs> that video and I was one of the first people to get a copy of it. And I loved it. I, I thought there was some great stuff there. However, it made me, and I think it was intentional, lose my faith. Right? And... What happened was some time later, I, I I also went through an atheist phase and I thought, this is empty. This this is pointless. And mm. I thought it's stupid. It's kind of, it's just like a child throwing a tantrum. No, 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 no. That's how <laughs> it came across to me. And I was like, and then I decided to do some research on these claims. And I discovered that one of the main sources of his information on, on Christianity, this woman, um, this doctor, whatever, she was a lunatic. I, did, I checked her sources, her references. And it was fiction. And I was like, this woman just made stuff up. 
They stuffed it into the video. It made a great story, but none of it was true. And I got angry. I was actually angry, and I guess I'm still kind of angry, that I was sold this lie so convincingly, and I've spent since then trying to take all of these stories apart. And now I end up on YouTube because of Islam. So Yeah. And and you're ending up in Islam just to become more infamous with, Islam, with the Muslims and the Christians. So you're doing something really well, brother. Okay, before, okay, well, since we're here, maybe tell the audience what happened, what the Muslims say, the Muslims about me, uh, and what, the, the, what the Christians, uh, the Protestants the, say the, about the me. Mus- the Muslims say, like, because you've lived somewhere, it does not mean that you know everything, literally. Just because you've read some books, it does not mean that you know anything. Literally, the most dumb arguments they will ever come across in my life. Uh, like, I'm speaking to someone, I say, this is written in your book. No, you need to contemplate it. Why is it saying this to understand? You just read something does not mean that it's this uh, that it's the ultimate truth. And I'm there. Okay, so if someone says that Aisha said because he married me when I was six years old and consummated the marriage when I was nine, and I was still playing with dolls, so I've not reached my puberty yet. So Aisha, I don't have to take it literally, I just have to understand the context behind it or what she's trying to say. So the context that I'm seeing, that she says I'm, I was six when I got married, and then I was uh, nine when I was con- when the marriage was consummated, and I was still playing with dolls. So she did not hit the puberty yet. So that's the literalist thing that I can take out of it. But is there anything else that is that some Something that is not there, that something, there's a line in the middle where it's like, this is not true. I'm like, show me that. No, it's what it says. It's what it (laughs) says. Exactly. Exactly. So you're saying at the speaker's corner, though, you say they are, they tell people not to listen to my content because. Exactly. Because you are, uh, you're somehow a very, very bad person who do not know what he's talking about. The beauty of Islam, you know, like just you don't know what you're saying. So we, we should stop watching you because you are a baddie. So, <laughs> so now why don't they? OK, so if my if my facts, if my story, my narrative, my evidence is false, mm. if it's artificial, if it's fiction, why hasn't someone taken the opportunity to call me onto their channel or come onto my channel and humiliate me in public? I will give them the opportunity. Why do you think that has not happened? What are the Muslims afraid of? What do they think? Well, why are they telling people not to watch my material? Three things. Pride. Literally, pride. Second, uh, because your channel is not full of like the subscribers like theirs, because they are so full of themselves that they don't particularly care of who they talk to. And, and third, because you're showing the sources, and unfortunately, then if they have to come up with like come up with an idea that they even they say that they, they disagree with your source because they go to the other source, even then they have the idea that maybe they differ from the opinion that you have shown. It still is Islamic, and it still will people will still understand that what you're showing over here is still part of that religion. So they can't negate it fully because it goes doesn't go as against their religion. Just it goes against their uh, sort of understanding. That's it. Which is why when they when they say to you, when they say to me that oh because because we they don't have anything against you, uh, because and they don't want to converse with you because you're showing your opinion. That's what they so they don't particularly care. But I say to them so if someone is showing something and you don't care, so he has to be more of a reactionary to do something that you might start caring. Just because he speaks words and he shows the sites of the sources, so you don't particularly care. But once he blows up, and in my, I mean the channel, <laughs> right? So yeah. Uh, so if uh, and then if he starts uh, doing something on this live stream, like instead of showing sources, but he starts like supposedly in in all honesty, some people like they do like start tearing Quran or start dumping Quran or start making some serious, serious, uh, you know, nasty things to Quran or make a claymation and uh, between Allah and Muhammad. Will that give you some sort of an incentive to go and challenge him then? Is that what you're trying to say? And then they shut up and then they leave. 
because the thing is like it's like they don't they don't understand like if you if you like if you like to bash someone you like to bash those people who are reactionary or you re, like the, you antagonize have an antagonistic nature but those uh people who are only citing sources you don't want to con- converse with them because they are not so worthy. do you think they can challenge me do you think Okay, so so they're telling other Muslims not to watch my channel. That they're just saying, mm. "Look, Lloyd's wrong. Lloyd, Lloyd's got it all wrong." Do they have hard evidence to prove me wrong? Can they actually factually demonstrate from their own sources that I am wrong? So far, that everyone, uh, people that I've spoken to, sadly, no. Okay, so so are they afraid that this material? Because I think you mentioned to me the other day that the, they're afraid that my material would lead people away from Islam. Would actually be the facts that I present would undermine their faith and lead them out of Islam. Do you think this of is course. the case? Of course, because when you're citing a source, they can actually go back and look, which is what makes it more problematic. Because that's what, what that's what made me leave too, my entire family. Because if we did not just take someone's word for it, I saw the source, I went back, I checked the source myself, and that's what made me come to a conclusion that this is indefensible. So I can't just I, I I can't be into it, and that's why I left. So supposing if you're showing something which is extreme, and if people are people are looking at this, if they check the source, and if even if they still, uh, you know, uh, they agree with it, and they say no, nah, this doesn't make us leave Islam, then it's their character that we can we're going to be challenging. But sadly, yeah, there are some people like this. On the like, screen, hang- so I've got a few. Yes. I've got about thirty different hadiths. Okay, these are Sahih hadiths. I mean, that <laughs> so someone mentioned it. I mean, I I often scraped semen from the garment of the Messenger of Allah with my hand. I found yeah. semen on the garment of the Messenger of Allah. I would wash semen, and then he would go to the mosque, and she'd still see the water drops in the spots. <laughs> I found semen on the garment, dried up. I scraped it off with my nails. When I found semen on Muhammad's clothes dried on his clothes i would scrape it off with my nails now i don't want to call aisha a liar because she is the the mother of the muslims she is mm-hmm. a great scholar in her own right yes but but are there lots of new testament references to semen being on the garments of the apostles being scraped off by their nine-year-old and seven-year-old brides uh, no, because uh, we we don't have perverts, uh, thankfully. Uh, and if someone was, they'll be immediately cast out because everyone would know and they will say exactly the way it says. It wouldn't just try building up anything. Like in the Old Testament, when we look at uh, certain things, which can be questionable, but we say that we don't, we don't come to a conclusion where we say that these people are our moralistic examples. We have a moral example. You guys have a moral example who does something like this. So we don't have that issue. It, the issue is on you. So tell me, explain to me how you follow someone, some imbecile like this who has semen all over his clothes and there's this girl who's scraping off with the nails. Um, the joke is, I wonder how she didn't, how did she didn't got Like she never got pregnant in the first place and her fingers. Uh, you know, well, if it was like a cartoon, yeah. I, I mean, there's a there's a pregnant. there's a medical theory that when 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 an when an adult male penetrates a minor, he can exactly. destroy her womb. So therefore, <laughs> that would lead to. Uh, look at this story. A guest came and stayed with Aisha, and he was given a yellow blanket of hers. The guest had a nocturnal emission on it, and he sent it back to Aisha with traces of that emission on it. Right, and then she asked him, "Why did you spoil my blanket? It would have been sufficient for him to scrape it off with his finger, because Aisha says I often scrape semen off from the garment of Allah, from the Prophet of Allah, with my finger." So, do Muslims know this? Because they they will deny this and they will pretend it means something else. But of but, course, they will. Um, so look, what, what, so, okay, okay, they, you've had a similar experience then with the Protestants. So you, you, you went to the Protestant church and yes. you had concerns. Uh, just briefly, while, while we're here, so what were the Protestant concerns with my videos and my content? 
Because at Speaker's okay. Corner, you've met many of these people. So, what did they so say? So Protestant, Protestants uh, at Speaker's Corner and outside Speaker's Corner. Um, I have shown some certain uh, sources. Point, just regards. brief point. I mean, England is the Church of England. Of course, that's the major major church there. I come from the Church of England, high church. So just for everyone's reference. Go on. Thanks. Yeah. So I... I, I speak to people at Speaker's Corner. I, I, it's not like only, um, what do you call it, only Christians of Speaker's Corner. I speak to Christians outside Speaker's Corner. Like if people think that my Christianity only uh, lies around the bubble of Speaker's Corner, that's that's a very crazy thing to assume. But I have conversations with people in different denominations, with different uh, churches, just to you know, have a broader idea of why they believe or what they believe. Uh, but then certain things which you have shown in regards to Martina Lutera, that's what I call him. <laughs> and you never know the pr pronouns anyways uh, these days. So I have seen, uh, and the, the best, the, the first thing which really kept my mouth open is where I was lost for words, is my sins are, but my sins are nothing when compared to St. Paul. Like, for fair enough. So you're boasting about your own character that you're much of a better character when it comes to as a sinner than St. Paul. There's something horrendously wrong here. Like, this is where I was like, hmm, what on earth is happening here? And that's, um, and then the other thing it says is like, uh, in regards to yeah, I think you're finding it. I I can't find it as well if I've, I've got it somewhere with me. But these are the sort of like topics which became an issue for me. And I, sh I presented it to many different couple of Christians that I spoke to at Speaker's Corner and outside Speaker's Corner. And I said, like, this is the video I got it from. I am seeing that this person has cited these source to me. What on earth is happening here? Yeah, this is Luther's works, volume 28. He's referencing 1 Timothy 1 14. It's in volume 28, page 246. Martin Luther says, If I look at my sins, they are nothing when compared with those of Paul. Let me just let me just pop this onto so I can make it you can see this, everyone can see this. If I look at my sins, they are nothing when compared with those of Paul. In other words, Paul was a worse sinner than me. According mm. to the Spirit, Paul is nothing when compared with me, because obviously my sins are better than his, so I'm better than St. Paul. That's Martin Luther. Exactly. Uh, this is not the only Some time he says that he's greater than the than the apostles. Mm. Someone said to me, which is uh, the, the worst idea of all, was someone actually tried to explain this to me in a way that, you know, because St. Because Paul himself says, I'm the worst of the sinners, I'm the worst uh, in every regard. Like, um, I, I wish that all the sins of the my people were cast on to me. Like, you know, like, because he's saying that, so Martin Luther, is, in that context, he's saying this. I'm like, still, so where is his humility when he says something like this in regards to when he's saying that my sins are nothing compared with those of St. Paul? I'm like, okay. So where's your where's your understanding that you're looking at someone whose op epistles we read in the Bible, and then you compare yourself in that perspective? How do you know your sins are better or your sins are worse? How do you compare that? How did you make that comparison? This is the first issue that I came at because there were reasonings and reasonings with me on this very, very one particular quote that you showed me. And I showed them that this is where it came from. But everyone started making excuses after excuses after excuses. I'm like, hold on for a second. I came from a cult of Islam where I've been told that if I see something questionable, I can not challenge it because otherwise that would be detrimental to my life, basically. Then right. I go to then I go to Christians and I say these things to me to them, but they they answer me and they make excuses like the Muslims will make excuses if I speak to them now, uh, but they will not they will not say that the way it is like this is wrong. That's where I would say, hmm, okay, what is happening here? And then people, some people telling me that I should I should concentrate on the Bible. I do not need to get into these things. Unless so you're telling me that I should not question these things, just concentrate on my Bible. Like Muslim said to me, I should concentrate on the Quran only, don't look at these other things. Should shut up for the sake of my own sanity. 
I'm like, okay, there's a, there's a huge similarity coming here. This is with the non-denominational Christians and the Protestants, in all honesty. Yeah, let me just bring this up. Just so everyone can see, this is in Luther's works, right? If I look at my sins, they're nothing compared with those of Paul. Paul is nothing compared with me. So this mm. is, um, yeah, this is Luther's works, as you can see. Lectures on Timothy, lectures on 1 Timothy, Luther's works. Just so you can see, it's a genuine reference, right? I didn't mm. make it up. Yeah. Yeah. So... so so in all honesty, when you when I have seen uh, this extreme version of excuses being made, um, like someone's calling, uh, like the way you said, I think I remember the once when you said um, Martin Luther said like reasoning is a concept of like a, a very whorish concept. Yeah, that reminded me of Islam. That reminded me the same thing where uh, in two thousand fourteen that call said to me, like. If I'm if I'm having a reasonable conversation with my uh, with this imam scholar that I've hired, paying him money to teach me Quran and then telling me that do not think, because if I reason with it uh, within my brain, but only just keep it within my heart and try understanding it, uh, okay, what's happening here? There's two there's there's two things, two different people saying pretty much exactly the same thing. So, yeah. so tell me, did they, you said that they, they, are these, these people that speak as corner and other Christians you've spoken with in the UK, are they saying that I'm like the Muslims, are they saying that I'm making things up? My facts are a fiction. Are they able to actually provide evidence as to where I am actually factually wrong, misquoting? And have they been telling people to stay away from my content because this might actually cause them issues? Yeah. Because because of the people that I've spoken to and I've, I've said like there's issues uh, that I'm looking at and then these issues when I'm when I'm talking about and you're telling me to avoid these things, uh, I don't have to go to uh, you and listen to you, and then I'm saying okay there's there's this one person who's showing this uh, one thing about someone and he's showing it and he's citing all the sources for me, so I should not go but I should only understand what your issues are but why don't you converse with this person who is showing me this first this stuff and then tell me come to me and say okay we're gonna go talk to him because our because our faith is not without reasoning we reason that's why we are we're told to ask and you shall find seek you shall get you know what i mean yeah. so that's where I'm like, now I want to have a conversation with uh, Lord. I have learned something from him. Why don't you have a conversation, conversation with him? Because we are not like Muslims. We don't just shut ourselves down for the sake of everyone to be, hi, we are so good, we are happy, lovely, lo lovey, lovey, all, everything, blah, blah, blah. No, if, if, if a non-denominational Christian is saying that he disagrees with you, come to you and say, why does he disagree with you? But they're saying, no, they don't have to or anything. No, just keep away from you and not speak to you is an issue for me. Then I'm like, I don't want to fall from one cult into another. There's some, so something okay. horrible happening here. So that's so they're discouraging, but they are discouraging people from watching my content. They're just saying, well, he's wrong. And they're discouraging yeah, people, literally. but they cannot. Okay, very interesting. Yeah, so Martin Luther states in his final sermon in uh, Eisleben, I believe, um, that the devil's bride, he calls reason the devil's bride, he says, rub dung in her face, which obviously in Luther speak means rub shit in reason's face, right? The lovely whore, she thinks she's wise, she wants to be wise, she thinks she's the Holy Spirit. She's the foremost whore of the devil. So he says this about 33 times. He calls reason the foremost tool, logic and reason is the foremost tool, the foremost whore of the devil. It is a gross sin that cannot be seen. And it is as bad as lust. It mocks, yeah. reason mocks and affronts God. It is a prostitute it has more hideous harlotry than any prostitute it's an idolater it's a whore chaser that runs after whores the scriptures call idolatry whoredom while reason calls itself wisdom and holiness but it's actually it's actually whoredom <clears throat> and the prophets would actually preach against this whoredom this idolatry the use of reason so mm. yeah this was martin luther's uh such wisdom of reason the prophets called whoredom so yeah, mm. he was very much strongly against the use of reason. Uh, that was he calls it 
äh, dass die Vernunft des Teufels höher ist. So, dass die Vernunft, the understanding, is the devil's whore. And it's here in the, and the devil's bride. You see, the Teufel's Braut. The devil's bride. It's here in the, in the Gothic script here. So, that's Martin Luther. So, so yeah, so I mean, so they, I would, I mean, I've, I've heard others obviously say things like, um, well, I disagree factually with Lloyd. Okay, fine. Mm. If, if I am factually wrong, then you must have evidence that can prove me wrong. I'm, I'm happy exactly. to, to be, to be shown the evidence. Um, so yeah. So I'm, I'm really, you know, I'd be happy, but I guess, do you think they're afraid of actually dealing with me face to face? Because I know I have a mountain of evidence. I have references, hundreds of pages of references that I've got prepped. So do you think there's a fear of actually dealing with me? I think there is a fear because when, because I, when I, in all honesty, I've seen like so far in my journey into Christianity, like, uh, like giving, coming to the context of background to try to put this together is being a Christian for for what, like eight months and then learning to all of these things and starting to Protestant side, uh, evangelical, uh, side of Christianity and then coming out of it, uh, thankfully, uh, in January, I think I became a, I became a, like more of a pure orthodox. Okay. Well, what Why, moved you there? <clears throat> what moved me there was these things. That's why I'm trying to build up the whole connection. Like I, when I see these things and when I have come to an understanding in regards to, if I have to reason with someone, I have to understand that why they think this way. And if you were citing me a source, and I, that is problematic, I will actually call it out to be problematic. I'm not going to make excuses for this because Muslims do the same thing. If Muslims are going to act like, because you you don't know, because you don't know the whole context behind it, so you should stop watching and stop learning from these people. And then I say to Christians, uh, to this thing, this is problematic. And then they say, no, 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 you don't know, you don't understand the whole context behind it. You need to learn, you need to stop watching. And I'm like, okay, what's the similarity here? It's like I will quote my um, my uh, my father in my church. He's beautifully put it for me. It's like I came to I'm, I'm quoting him literally, quote unquote. I came to orthodoxy because I realized Protestantism is just a milder form of Islam. <laughs> I'm not gonna name the father. I don't want to diss him, but I uh, hope my father blesses me. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what he said to me. And all honesty. I completely agree with him. Well, thank you, so, Sheikh Bayardi. Says uh, considering what is going on over here, here is some money to buy an army helmet. So, so <laughs> yeah, let me just let me just get that up. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. And and welcome all. I see Nicodemus. Nicodemus wants to know if you will join them somewhere afterwards. I didn't see where. But there's a link to a live. He's going to do a live, and he wants to know if you might join him after this chat. I will do for sure. Yeah, he says there's a there's a guy called okay. Sentry says there's a guy called Dawa over Dunya tries to make response to people like Lloyd, but it does a terrible job. I I've oh. invited I've invited hundreds of Muslims in the chat to 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 meet with me, discuss the Sharia, and then show me from the Sharia sources how I'm wrong. And um, yeah, I haven't, you know, had many takers as as everyone knows. Oh, I, and then it, yeah, sorry. Yeah, go on, go on, please. And uh, I was I was going to say uh, for your for the question that you asked me, pretty literally. So they actually uh, they don't have anything against you. Yes, they have nothing against you because when you cite a source, what's the counter source? Unfortunately, there is none. So them coming up with pathetic, pathetic arguments to me in regards to like, you don't know the context. You cited me the context. You cited the source to me. And now you're saying to me that you, I, like, I'm reading something. I'm reading it wrong. I'm reading it differently. I'm reading it differently to you. Have I got some sort of like a lens uh, on my eyes that covers that this is all false? Like literally, what are you trying to make excuses for? Call it yeah. up for what it is. This is wrong. I'm saying so. If this guy wants to remove the book of uh, the book of Saint James because it says that works without faith is uh, work, faith without works is dead. He wants to remove something like this, and I'm saying, who is he to remove this? And then they have no answer for me whatsoever. Literally, they have no answer for me. And I say, 
I read the Prot- I'm reading the Protestant Bible. I've got so many Bibles. I read this Septuagint, right? So mm-hmm. Orthodox Study Bible. I'm reading with the context and the understanding of the Bible. And I'm looking, uh, okay, Roman Catholics have removed books. I'm not talking about that. I am going to be openly, honestly, talk, uh, speak about more about Protestantism because I've got more understanding of why I left uh, the evangelical non-denominational or the Protestants. Why I left? Because my few tidbits of understanding and them reasoning with me, which I can't reason with. Like, if you are showing me about St. James' book that this person wants to remove, and then people put him up on a pedestal, like, look, no, but we put Jesus in the pedestal, but we are going to accept what he gives us. But Martin Luther was not a bad person because he challenged a Roman Catholic. Okay, fair enough, you challenged a Roman Catholic, but you are saying that it's okay for him to say all these things? This is where the double standards kick in. And that's where I say, Mm -hmm. nah, this is an issue for me. Like that's where- Just for the audience, um, just to clarify on the James thing for me, Martin Luther couldn't kick these books out of the Bible. It would have been too radical, would have caused too much of a scene. He did shift a number of books around. He moved some of the books he didn't like to the back of the Bible. He moved them into a separate appendix. He also wrote forewords to them, prefaces to them that would undermine them. For instance, he said of St. Jude, he says uh, that the ancients, one, the ancient fathers excluded this epistle from the main body of the scriptures. It's an epistle that should not be counted among the chief books. So he would undermine them like this, right? He says the epistle of St. James was rejected by the ancients. I do not regi- regard St. James as the writing of an apostle. It is flatly against St. Paul and all the rest of the scriptures in ascribing justifications to works. So St. James is wrong. Right. And then he says, so, which is odd when apostle, when Protestants today say, well, you know what actually James mm-hmm. meant was Martin Luther doesn't take that tack. He says, no, James is wrong. He says this. So he goes on to say with Revelation, okay, that he, I miss more than one thing in the book of Revelation. It makes me consider it to be neither apostolic nor prophetic. He says the book of Revelation of John is neither prophetic nor apostolic. You know what? The book, you know, the, the book of Romans is not apostolic nor prophetic. I think it's junk. We need to throw it out of the Bible. Th- that's what he's saying. That's really what he's saying. Imagine I say that about the book of Romans. That's what he's saying about James here and, and other books. He says, I can in no way detect that the Holy Spirit produced the revelation. My spirit cannot accommodate itself to this book. For me, this my is reason spirit. enough not to think highly of it. Now, he goes on. I will be covering in my Luther series. I'll go at length. <clears throat> how he undermines, insults, and completely demeans about 30% of the Bible. So, yeah. Sola Scriptura is, the man's a hypocrite, because everyone goes on about Sola Scriptura, I have to hear this all day, every day, and yet Martin Luther insulted, demeaned, and completely eviscerated 30% of the Bible. Exactly. This is where I start questioning the Protestants and non evangelical I'm like, what's happening here? What is this supposed to be? I, uh, I, I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm seriously questioning all of this and I'm looking and you're not even giving me an answer. All you're trying to say to me is shut up, Francis. Uh, just, just read your Bible and shut your mouth. Literally, that's what I was getting out from these people. You don't know any better. You don't understand this. You don't understand this. Just shut up, Francis. Just well, shut up, Francis. I mean, look, literally. for instance, you look at the table talks. Number 5443, it says, Luther has a low opinion of the epistle of James. That's the title. And he says, I maintain that some Jew, this is the book of James, some Jew wrote the book of James who had probably heard about Christian people, but never met any. So some random Jew wrote James, some totally random Jew, never heard of Christians. I mean, never met any Christians, but heard about Christians. So he decided what the hell. Christians don't like faith. You know what? I'm just going to mess with them. I'm going to write a book on works just to just to mess with the Christians. So he says, wait a moment. I'll oppose the Christians and I will urge works alone. This he did. So this is Martin Luther's view of the... So to Martin Luther, the canon was not closed. The gospel was not inspired. The gospel, yeah, that book's crap. That needs to go. That book, yeah, it's horrible. Then needs to go. That book uh, needs to go. That one needs to go. That one needs to go. Sola Scriptura, people. That's exactly. 
when 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 I read all of these things that you showed me, and I and I'm looking at people, and I'm trying to understand the reason that they're trying to give me no 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 no, but he's being projected in the wrong way, Francis. Yeah. Francis, you don't know because the the one the, this uh, brother Lloyd you're watching, he is he's tinting your he's weakening your faith in Christianity. Uh, I'm like, are you serious right now? Do you honestly, honestly believe that you say this all all this pathetic stuff to me about uh my, my, about brother Lloyd is making me doubt Christianity? No, 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 it's making me doubt you all because you're not able to give me an answer of why books were removed and why these things were being said and what is happening here. But I'm looking, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm giving them a whole barrage of issues here that I'm having, but instead of answering me, they don't have any answer for me. Yeah, there were a and number that's... of books. Yeah, so, sorry, yeah, no, um, there were, sorry, there were a number of books that, that the Greek Orthodox, the Eastern Orthodox, the Coptics, the Ethiopian Orthodox, the everyone else before the Protestants regarded as canon. Martin yes. Luther mentioned in other books, and he says, they contain nothing that one could not find better in Aesop. You know Aesop's fables? Aesop's fables no. are, these are, these are fictional works. These are fictional stories that contain a moral. And he said mm. that these biblical books are no better than these children's tales that contain a moral. Like, for instance, one of Aesop's fables is, this lion gets a, gets a, a thorn in its foot. So this lion can't walk and he's lying there in pain and this mouse comes along and the mouse basically takes the thorn out of the lion's paw. And then the moral of the story is that sometimes the biggest, most powerful, most kingly creature can be taken low and sometimes you need help from the smallest, humblest. So even the most humble among us can help mm. the greatest to some moral or whatever. And he says some Bible books, and you mentioned a number of Bible books that are actually no better than children's stories. And should be thrown out for that reason. Um, FM Knight of the Immaculate Heart actually says, all we hear is I, I, I. Now, when I get into Martin Luther's theology, I'm, I'm busy working on that right now. And when I start discussing Martin Luther's theology, you're going to discover that, that when you read Martin Luther's theology, it's Jesus died for me so that mm. I could be saved. My view is that Jesus spoke to me, told me that I mm. am special. My theology is the best exactly. theology because I believe this. Jesus said, God told me in my ear that I, I, me. When you read his theology, this man doesn't care about anyone else. God talks to him and Luther just talks to himself. Just to hear. Yes. So yes, it's all I, 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 me, me, me. And that's a fact. We'll get to that at some point. It, absolutely. Because uh, when I'm when I'm reading all of this, uh, according to me, like, how are you like, how, why are you not why are you not questioning your own uh, spiritual reasoning? If, I, if that's what you want to put it as I'm saying, OK, so you're saying I do not agree with this because to me, it's spiritually wrong. OK, what gives you the authority to say that in your opinion that it's all it's always been there for centuries. But in your opinion, this is wrong. Well, St. Paul so, is nothing uh, compared to him, right? <laughs> exactly, right? So yeah. like no 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 history, no nothing. Martina Lutera, me, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my skirt on and I'm gonna call myself she and people are gonna accept it. Yeah, you exactly. know what people also should realize is that he didn't just insult the New Testament, he insulted the old testament as well. Yes. Martin Luther used to maintain, just like the Muslims do, Martin Luther maintained that that the Jews corrupted the old testament mm. or the Jewish Bible. Martin Luther maintained that the Jews corrupted. Where have you heard that before? Let's think. There's a guy called, I know there's a religion where they say that the, that the Jews corrupted the Bible. I, what's the name? Man, do, you, do, do, you, do you mean Islam? Is that do like Islam? something in Iceland? Or is it something? Mm. It, man, it's on the tip of my tongue. I, I, is, it comes from Baka, the Valley of Baka, doesn't it? Baka, Baka. You know, it's, it's someone in the audience. Please help. Ice lamb. Yes. Ice lamb. That lamb is made of. It's, we're getting close. We're getting close. But yes. But there's. I know there's a religion that also says that the that the Old Testament was corrupted by the Jews. I'm pretty sure of it. Yes. And Martin Luther had the same view. Now, so then, of course, this told him, well, I need to get rid of a bunch of the Old Testament books. Now, one of the excuses he had was these books were not written in Hebrew, hmm. right? So, of course, they had to go because they're not in Hebrew. But yet, at the same time, he's saying all the books are corrupted by the Jews. But he only wants the ones written in Hebrew. 
anything that's written in Greek or Aramaic or whatever can't be accepted. Only the Old Testament books in Hebrew must stay. So then he gets rid of a bunch of books because there were no Hebrew copies. Lately, we've actually discovered many of these books in Hebrew. So now the Protestants didn't go, oh yeah, well, we need to include them again because they are in Hebrew. That's the rule, right? So it's just, it just, none of it makes sense. None of it does, in all honesty. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll put my hands up here and I'll seriously say that none of it makes sense to me when I started looking into all of these things. Because to me, it was so, so much like Islamic, right? Islamic talk process about things where, like, I, this, because I feel like this, that's why it's true. There's no reasoning yeah. with everyone. There's no subtle, like, there's no understanding. Okay, there's a, yeah. uh, why do we like like that's why why did my journey in protestantism or non-denominational christians evangelicals end it so quickly and abruptly in wanna, five months is yeah sorry yeah. no no is, yeah, go on actually because i want to ask you i don't want to go too long but i want to ask you so yeah what made you decide not to accept what are the basic reasons not to accept protestantism and what drew you what was it about the theology of greek orthodoxy the orthodox approach that 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 drew you the ancient approach they said that drew you hmm. so in uh that's so my issue started off because i was about to be baptized uh into this uh, non uh non-denominational uh evangelical christians uh aka protestants like honestly they uh they said you know, for five months I've been looking, they have taken verses out of context when I read the Bible, when I supposedly I'm reading Romans. Uh, they have their own interpretation of everything. They, they see a verse and they say, this is how they believe, this is the way it says it. So that's why we, we have the truth. Because we know the Holy Spirit somehow guides us directly to tell us that this is how this verse says it is. I started challenging all these people in my uh, in this previous church I, go, I used to go to, and I started saying, uh, you're saying that on the one hand, Jacob uh, never received, uh, sorry, uh, I think we, uh, it was uh, Jacob, right, who received, uh, who was going to be received the blessing, uh, but he, from the uh, from Isaac, but he... Yes, I believe so, yeah. I think if I, yeah, yeah, I could be wrong, but I, I think it sounds right. In Genesis. Yes, yeah. in Genesis. So they said, but you know, like, like, look at this, this person never received blessing, even though his father blessed him. I'm like, did you read the context behind it? Like God blessed him himself. Like, I, why are you leaving that out for these new Christians to understand these things? You're leaving something out for them to come into, come into Christianity knowing that this is not what it says. What's happening here? And... Thank you ah, so much, Drew. Drew Travis says, and thank you very much, Drew. And no thank you also, Francis, for speaking up for the child victims of Islam. So, which is true. You you spoke up harshly against child abuse within Islam. And we know from Rotherham, we know from not just, but so many cities in the UK, exactly. there is a child abuse epidemic. And we know it's a Muslim epidemic. Yes. This is now well admitted. This is no longer fiction. This is fact. Exactly. Um, no, so thank and you for thank that. Thank you, Drew. No, honestly, yes. and thank you guys uh, for actually, uh, like, especially the prayers uh, and all uh, that you remember me by. In all honesty, without you guys, I, I didn't have this empowerment within me because I think especially the first and foremost, I will all thanks to God, in all honesty, to allow me to do these things. And to be a voice of reason somehow uh, for people who do not have that voice. So that's why it it affects me more because it's very close to me for what happened to me as a child. So that's where I'm more empathetic towards these things, and I'm more vocal about these things. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shut up for the sake of because it be it because it goes against how their feelings of, I should put their feelings in the context. No, 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 no. There's a child we're talking. If you do not like what I say, you have the right to shut up or watch something else. But I'm going to speak up for the defenseless children who have been through atrocities that you get, that are unimaginable. So this is why I'm sorry, but... No, no, go for it. Thank you, Andrew. Coming back to the point of me reasoning within my church in regards to 
this verse is saying this, you're saying this. What's happening here? You're like, I see Romans, uh, you know, like, uh, but, you know, like, on you know, the verses, even in, like one cannot have two masters. They will use that verse out of context constantly. Like you should, you cannot have this, and you cannot have this. You cannot go to this church or this church. You you need to decide immediately. Like you're pushing people with the verses, like they're playing with verses without understanding. And I say, hmm, okay, what's happening here? I'm like. In in Quran, if, with Muslims, there's an issue because if, when they read the when they read the Quran, they constantly play with everyone and they say, no, this is not what the way it says. It's not Surah 65 verse four does not say that. Where does it say like this or this? It's talking about something else. Their own interpretation of what's written in the Quran, right? So then yeah. I see the Protestants and the non evangel non denominational Christians, the evangelicals. They, no, 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 no. Uh, because, but, like, it does not. It does not mean this. It to them, it means this. Then I'm looking at someone else. It means this. I'm, I'm looking. I'm like, this is an issue. Everyone has their own sort of understanding of the Bible, but there's no set understanding of the Bible. What is happening here? This is why uh, I said, okay, I'm looking at a lot of issues here. First of all, you, then I start questioning the sacraments i said we don't have sacraments like do this in my remembrance and you just have this um uh, this wafer and um uh, and what do you call it this uh, rab rabina of this juice grape juice yeah and that's all you think and you don't you don't have the sort of any and you know like understanding of why we do sacraments in the first place there's no regard for sacraments uh, they don't have any regards for the marriage sacraments, baptism. Just, just do it because it. Just do it. Like there's yeah. no reasoning of why there's sacraments. You don't have understanding of uh, history, you know, like, history and history. tradition. Exactly. There's no history or tradition. I'm just looking at a blank church. I'm looking at, I'm like, these people do differently. These people do differently. And every Protestant, every evangelical have their own understanding of what Christianity is. Yeah. And then looking at some people who are in the church in the very high place cannot even tell me, explain to me what Trinity is. Right. I was then, like... Yeah. If I can interrupt you for a moment, can you read what's on the screen there, highlighted, if I may? Sure. Fourth, when a man has had sexual intercourse with a girl under the age of nine years and has ruptured the part, it is unlawful for him to have further connection with her because but she is not released for, from her ties if connected with him by marriage or slavery. If no rupture has taken place, the prohibition is not incurred according to the most valid opinion. That, that is clear, right? The meaning there, I think. This is in this. So we had a question from Tornika Uman Koshvili. I just got here. Could anyone please tell me what the thing highlighted on the screen is from? Is a link available? I have just posted the link to this text. We are now on page 25, 26. This is the digest of Mohammedan law. The digest of Mohammedan law is still in use in Pakistan today. It is the second most used Sharia manual which is used as a reference within the within the Pakistani Islamic Republic court system. This is a valid, modern, still applicable. This this is a 300-year-old manual, I think, two, 300 years old. But um, it's still in use today. So what does this tell you, Francis? What do you read from this? What does this tell us? This is 65 for. If... It's un it's unbelievable to start with, uh, that how rife pedophilia is in a society. But looking at this, it's like you have you have just ruptured. You've not seen a child. You have seen uh, a sexual object who you have sexualized in your filthy brain, and then you absolute sorry to use the word, but the bastards uh, have the audacity to. Take that person, that human being who happens to be a child, and 
you don't have to have uh, you don't it's unlawful for him to have further connections and i'm i'm just dumbfounded in all honesty yeah. more than anything but it doesn't surprise me and yeah. she's not even released from her ties like she's still um uh, she's still uh, an object yeah. to somehow play with because even mohammed played with aisha till the marriage yeah. consummation yeah. so on this I'm tell sorry. me something uh, would you be willing to come back for another talk in the future? Could we do this again, say, next week? Would you be open to that if we hadn't Absolutely, enough? yes. I would love to have a second talk with you. Um, I want to, because um, I'd like to continue the conversation. And as you're speaking, you're making me think of things. And um, I want to just mention one of the reformers, one of the most famous reformers is Thomas Munzer, right? Mm. He was a social revolutionary. And just, just guess... Okay, here's a question. Did Thomas Munzer use a rainbow flag as part of his social revolutionary group? And did he preach a message of hope and change? Let's see. Yes or no? Um, I could say yes, because it doesn't surprise me anymore. Because the, the, the rainbow flag was part of Thomas Munzer's... Uh, movement and he spoke of hope and change hope and change social revolutionary um so yeah and uh, so i will get to this and then there's one thing i want to do uh we want to talk about something i want to introduce to the audience and get your thoughts because um before i come back to your conversation because i'd love to hear more about your views of protestantism versus why you moved to the orthodox faith mm. so on this point, so without going to too much history here, right, the evangelical church, I'm just going to bring up these stuff. So let me skip the history. Most Baptists are evangelical. The evangelical church is fairly new, right? Now, they all claim that they take the Bible very seriously. They believe in Jesus Christ, their Savior and Lord. And the term comes from the evangelion or evangelion, meaning the good news of the gospel. Mm. Now, I've got references here from Wikipedia. Granted, Wikipedia has issues, except, but w when the information is correct, then I'm happy to accept it if I can check. But obviously, Wikipedia has a lot of bad info as well. Now, this is mm. the National Association of Evangelicals, which is a group of evangelical churches. They're speaking here of the evangelical church, right? I will be covering this soon. But I want to mention a survey was done a couple of years ago by Lifeway Research, and it was done... Uh, to look at the views amongst, this is a large survey, a modern survey done of the views of Protestants, right? Especially evangelicals. And so notice here, right? When you look at this view here, 51% of Protestants agree that the Bible was written for each person to interpret as he or she chooses. Right? The Bible was written for each person to interpret as they choose. Now, this, this lines up with Martin Luther's views, and I will discuss this at length on my channel, and I have already in the past. Now, for instance, okay, mm. um, so let's, let's have a look at this one. Uh, let's see. Ah, now this is the important one, right? Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God. Now, 55% of evangelicals believe that Jesus is the first and greatest being. Yeah. This means Jesus is a created thing, therefore not God, right? A creature like you and me. Mm. And this means that this is the Arian heresy, and it's exactly the same thing that Islam teaches. It is no different to what Islam teaches. Now, I want to show people... Uh, a little bit more detail on this and just get your thoughts and just so the audience can have a view on this. Okay, I'm going to bring sure, this up. Sure. Okay, so here we go. Up to 65% of evangelicals, according to this survey, right, are not Christians, as I, as I wrote here, but heretical pretenders. Because these evangelicals, like Muslims, believe that Jesus was a created being and therefore not God, which is the Arian heresy. Now, 30% of evangelicals say Jesus was not God. That's in a poll. Nearly a third of evangelicals say Jesus was a good teacher, a good man, a, hi a, a hippie, skipping through the valleys, skipping through yes. the valleys. Life is good. Everyone follow me. Get your weed. Right? But it was not God, according to a new survey. 65% of evangelicals believe Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God, which directly conflicts with Orthodox Christianity. 
So yes. one, he's a good teacher, but Jesus was not God and Jesus was a created being. This is the Aryan heresy. This is what Muslims mm. teach. Now, yes. this is 65% of American Protestants. Now, according to church doctrine, Orthodox church doctrine, these are not Christians. These are heretics. Now, this I throw out to Protestants. What do you say to this? These are Bible-believing evangelicals. We believe in the Bible. So, yes. the, you are hard, look, you may as well say the Shahada at this point. Absolutely. Because if you're saying that God, uh, the ultimate God is who you believe and that's it. Uh, and if you, you think that obviously Jesus came because Jesus was a created being, um, you literally are siding with Mormons, uh, Latter-day Saints, Jehovah Witnesses. You can just yep. side with everyone then. Like you evangelicals would immediately cuss them out, but you will have the same sort of mindset within yourself. So I don't know, they will, they're will they very good at pointing fingers at other people, but they don't realize these three fingers, these are pointing back at them. That's literally what I say to them all the time, honestly. Yeah. So I will be talking about this, but I hope everyone understands this is not, everyone goes, oh my God, the Catholic Church is evil. Well, mm. the Protestant Church is heretical. It is outright yeah. false. Okay. This is not like 1%. This is 65% of American Protestants are out of their tiny little minds. Okay? It's about a personal relationship. Yeah, it's about personal views, private interpretation. Yeah, do what you want. Think what you want. That's all you need to know. Mm. So this is, this is a serious problem. Protestants have no right to lecture, at least evangelicals, Baptists, which include Baptists and others, have mm. no right to lecture anybody until we check if you're in the 30 percent that actually believes that jesus is god otherwise you can you can just get lost because exactly. you have nothing to say to me that i want to hear same like i'm not no like i've already made enemies i look like i am very open to discuss more of these things with you uh because when i when i started understanding um like non-denominational non uh, Christians, evangelicals, and Protestants, and my conversation with them was so, so such an eye opener for me. Uh, that's where it made me leave them more and more because of coming to the point where you can't, you can't reason with these people because these people have got really heretical ideas. And I left them because I did not even know what Arianism was or who what what sort of what sort of heresies are these. Like I did not know these heresies, the names of these heresies. But I was getting to the point where I've been I've been brought into Christianity with an understanding that uh, God is triune, so uh, Jesus Christ is fully God, fully man, hundred uh, percent. And then some of the some of the people, uh, yeah, but you know, like the, the creation, uh, this like the vessel and all of this. And I'm like, what are you saying? Like, you honestly sound more heretical than anything. Like, you don't even use the words properly. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the Nicene Creed, um, just so that everyone, so you asked, what is Arianism? So Arius was one of the very first heretics, one of the early yeah. heretics. He was a major threat for the church. His ideas lasted for hundreds of years. They still exist within yeah. Islam. He believed Jesus was created, therefore not God. Therefore, Jesus cannot yes. die for your sins and give you salvation. This completely destroys the foundation of Christianity. Jesus was just a man, in other words. And then, of course, Literally, yeah. he, he was the guy that led to the church creating the first canon of the Bible because he created his own canon of 11 books. Mm. He got rid of most of the Old Testament. He said, those Jews, ah, those Jews got to go. Those evil Jews yeah. got to go, got to go, got to go. And then he took the, the, the New Testament and he basically cut up the New Testament, didn't like, I don't like this chapter, don't like, oh, that book's got to go, that book's out, that book's mm. out, that book's out. And he started cutting up, and he made the very first, a, a heretic was the very first person to make, like Martin Luther, by the way, look at the parallel, yeah. was the very first person to make a canon of the Bible, of 11 books, made up of his preferred version of the Bible. Mm. And um, yeah, and so the church was forced to do two things. One, it was forced to make a canon of the Bible, a formal canon, and two, and had to make the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God is against the Gnostics. We believe in one yes. God, not three gods. The Father, the Almighty, against the, the Almighty. Gnostics. He is the yes. Father. It's also against the Muslims today. Yeah. Maker of heaven and earth against the Gnostics who believe that, yeah. that Yahweh is actually 
the the demiurge who is effectively Satan. But go into my that's a very that's an oversimplification. Okay. Mm. Okay, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God against the Gnostics, eternally begotten of the Father against the Arians and adoptionism. adoptionism. God from God, light from light, true God from true God against the Arians. There's exactly. a reason behind the Nicene Creed. Begotten, not made against the Arians. Through him exactly. all things were made against the Gnostics and the Arians. Right? For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man against Docetists and Ebionists. Your thoughts on that, if I may? Um, yes. Uh, I, I'm i going to be honest. Um, I saw it, I literally, I came to know about all these heresies in literally since January up till now. It's been three months, and I've come to know more about Christianity than I was in a Protestant or non-evangelical church. And I'm going to be serious here. I do not even know these heresies, but... Arianism, uh, monophysites, or uh, what's theatocytes, what's, uh, what's, what, what's, what do you call it, uh, what's uh, deocism. The, these sort of heresies, I came to know a lot after, uh, like, uh, like since I joined Orthodoxy. And looking at all of this, like literally, some of the things they'll say, in Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. But then when I ask them, what, who is Jesus? They will not explain to me like the way it should be explained. And you are, you're, 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 you're working in the church and you're teaching new Christians, but you don't even know who Christ is. Your Christology is nowhere. Yeah. Your understanding of the Trinity. Why was Nicene Creed even a creed in the first place? You don't even know these reasonings. Yeah. And you're telling me, you're preaching me Christianity? Yeah. There's something seriously wrong here. This is what was an issue. Yeah. I just want to pause and say thank you. Uh, praise Yahweh. He is triune. Thank you, Brother Lloyd. And that is a super chat from Islam Unpacked. I'll put the channel here. I will drop this in the chat right now. So I'll call it Islam Unpacked. Thank you very much. So this is Islam Unpacked, who also does videos on Islam. That's his home there. So yeah, so, so thank you very much for that. I actually watched this video, God Logic Answering a Muslim. I actually watched this. This was really good. Yeah. This is actually really interesting. So there's these little clips, summaries of some of the longer videos. There's some good stuff here. So thank you very much, Islam Unpack. So guys, please have a look at the channel. I've just dropped it in the chat. Okay. So uh, let me just do that again. I'll just grab it. Okay. I'll just drop the link again a couple of times. I'll do it two or three times so that you have it. So so thank you very much for the support. Um. So, so yes, the, the, the creeds were a response yeah. to heresy. Exactly. Here's a question. Yes. If within Protestant doctrine, I mean, Protestantism, at least evangelical, which, which encompasses a number of churches, right? Yes. Um, within the Protestant umbrella, if they don't believe Jesus is God, right? How, and, and, and they interpret, and if, more than half of them interpret the Bible the way that they feel that they want. Mm. What is the difference between doctrine and heresy? What's the difference between eternal principles and something I made up today? This is where I start challenging them. I'm like, uh, you have this own interpretation of who Christ is, and you have your own interpretation of the Bible, the verses, and everything else. Uh, you take some things literally, some things you take as, um, you know, like, um, okay, whatever, we can pick and choose verses, right? Like the Islam, like the Quran uh, will be like, we can just pick and choose whatever we feel like and we can still be in this faith. Not not understanding that, okay, there's some dogmatic uh, ideology. There's, I'm sorry, there's a dogmatic uh, thing that you are going to be adhering to, supposedly, so triune God. Who is triune God? What is the understanding of Trinity? What is Trinity? The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who is the son? What, like the son, only begotten son. So I supposedly would ask someone like a evangelical or uh, like a, a Protestant, and I would say to them, monogamies. What? <laughs> that 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 speaks volumes. So mm -hmm. only begotten son. I'm like so, and uh, adding someone also, I have to give thanks to where it belongs. Is Sam Shamoon too, who really showed me a lot of these things, and speaking to him and coming to watching him and coming to an understanding where I am 
I'm very much aligned with what he's trying to say because if he he's trying to say Bible butchers, like you will use a Bible, you will take a you will take the Bible and you will literally have uh, no idea what it says, but you're going around and preaching it like you are know it all. But I would ask you a very simple simple question about why you believe this and this and this. They wouldn't be able to answer me. They will know all these Bible verses. They will memorize all these verses. But when they throw the verses at me, even then I ask them, may explain right. me this and explain me this. And they wouldn't explain me this. So that's why uh, coming to the point where in my, where uh, when I said to my uh, priest in my church and I told him, I'm sorry, I won't be ba getting baptized from you anymore. Uh, first of all, when I understand in the Bible, it completely and clearly says that uh, there's no, uh, he, St. Paul does not allow any female priests. He was like, no, 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 no. But we have come, we have, forward, we have moved on from the time now. We can have female priests uh, because if there's no male, then the female has to take over, right? This is reasoning with me. I'm like, okay, you know what? So I can, what I can do is I can choose any Bible verse. And I say, uh, because we have moved along with time now, so we don't have to accept this verse. We can just move along, tag along. You know what I mean? Because Bible is just uh, an opinion, right? So Jesus was so 2,000 years ago. I mean, good grief, right? Exactly. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so that's yeah. where it's always a pick and choose with these people. So and you I wanted... Really so look, I don't want to go longer than an hour and a half. I think we've done 90 minutes. Hour oh. 26, we're going to the four or five. I know the time is, time has gone very fast. Amazingly, yeah. it's been like five minutes. But I, I try not to go too long. So we could, I'd love to pick this up again next week. Would sure. you say that you felt there was more certainty, more... Jordan Peterson says that people want complexity. Right, people want something that they need to think about and problem yes. solve, and really something that has depth to it, something that they need to analyze and learn and study and commit to actually delving into its depth and changing themselves, improving themselves to learn. Rather than ah, oh, Christianity is easy; just believe in Jesus and off you go. That's too easy. There's nothing to it. It's like it's not. There's no food there. It's it's like it's like candy floss. Would you believe? Is that one of the reasons, perhaps, that you felt that that moving towards one of the older faiths gave you? To orthodoxy gave you you had to learn improve you had to apply yourself study you know get, become smarter better learn learn terms learn theology do you think that that was yes. something that drew you exactly because when i started speaking to some uh, some people in the eastern orthodox churches and i came to a realization that these people are at least able to answer me the things that i want answers for they're giving me they're giving me things to understand and read. They're giving me uh, okay why Bible why Bible is the way we read the Bible and why do we read the Bible in the context where it should be read? Like these sort of tidbits of answers were a lot a lot more closer to me, and I was like, yeah, these are the answers I'm seeking, and you you have the ability to answer them to me. But sadly, if I speak to any of the uh, any of the other denomination, uh, when it comes to Protestants and uh, non-denominationals, they never had those answers for me. But only one thing that none of these things matter. None of these things matter. You need to like this. Uh, you're going into religiosity. Yeah. They start bashing me all, all these time. Like instead of having uh, having a dialogue with me, there's just a bashing game. No, you are moving from one religion to another. You are in error. You are in mistake. And I'm like, but, but how what? can you, if if there's no fixed orthodoxy, how can you know that you're right and that the other religion is wrong? Exactly. Right? And also, what I've noticed is my personal view is that, is that, um, oh, what's the point? Let me just let me get my thoughts together. That anything that Protestants generally cannot agree upon becomes secondary. It automatically yes. goes that secondary. What if it is primary? What if it is important? What if it is critical? And and that and the, that to me is an issue. So look, I don't want to go beyond an hour and a half. That's typically the length I want to go. Um, so I'd like to wind down here. But I mean, this we end in a slight cliffhanger. But I'd love to to come back, ask some more questions, get your input and thoughts, and you know, again, more of your development and the the, the questions you've asked the conversations you've had, the difficulties you've encountered as to why you made the decision you made. And, um, you know, that, that would be interesting to get your perspective 
and uh, perhaps even get you on with Thunderous at some point because you're both, sure. you know, you both you both come from that background, and it would be interesting to get the mixed perspective. Um, obviously, he falls, I think, more into the 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 Protestant camp. I mean, he and I talk about things like we don't agree, but that's fine, you know. That's like, but we 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 he understands my point of view, and I understand his, and um, so. But yeah, we'd be great. So. Um, any last words from you, and then um, you know, then we can wave goodbye to the audience because I know there's another talk they want to go to, which I don't want to clash with too much, you know. And then we can pick this up in a week. Sure, uh, I would say, uh, in all honesty, as I said, uh, as I said about my church father actually mentioning it to me, which completely is my point of view, is that next week we are going to be i'm going to be starting off with why i came into orthodoxy and my issues when it comes to people the christians that I spoke to a speaker's corner and the christian i spoke outside speaker's corner um and i'm showing them these things and there's unfortunately been nothing but a very um a very harsh eye opener of how much similarity is so the quote that i'm going to read to you again this is the second time this uh as my church father said to me i came to orthodoxy because i realized protestantism is just a milder form of islam and as bad as it sounds i have to agree 100 percent, because this is my journey and i have to also before anything i have to thank you lord for enlightening me to a lot of these things and coming me and me right to uh, right to be like instead of being dissuaded by people uh at least you gave me a you gave me a different narrative and you showed me that i need to question these things because i just shouldn't be blindly following something if something is wrong i call it out for what it is it's called spade a spade simple as so really appreciate that and thank you for everyone who has watched us and there'll be more, a lot more to come. Thank you. No, thank you guys. Thank you very much to the audience. I really am grateful for all of the support. I am so grateful. It allows me to, to buy the research that I need to buy, to pay for the resources I need to get. And I thank you very much for that. Um, I'm here because of you. I, I have all the equipment I have, this fantastic microphone, my great camera, my, my wonderful mouse, my great keyboard because I work so many hours. I have the tools that I need to produce the work that I do, and thank you for that. And um, and yes, you're very brave, Francis. Thank you very much for what you've been doing at Speaker's Corner. Thank you for for, for you know going there and standing your ground and speaking the truth. You know, being speaking moral, <laughs> on mor standing on moral principles, moral grounds, and and actually it's calling a spade a spade and saying what's wrong is wrong. And um, yeah, it, we need more of that. And uh, thank you exactly. For that. But God bless you, brother, and God bless you, all the audience. And that's what I say. If I say stay away from Islam, I will also say stay away from Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformation. <laughs> They're not going to do you any good. I'm being honest. Yeah, there. yeah. I'm going to be talking more about that. It's it gets worse. It gets it doesn't get any better as we go. So, guys, no, thank course. you very much. Um, thank you all very much for the audience for your time. And I know you've got another show you want to get to. So, is the captioning not available? I am not sure why. Um, so I will tell you what I will try, I will organize um, subtext subtitles for this afterwards. Um, so guys, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. I will probably catch up with you tomorrow evening. Unfortunately, Thunderous is not available for two weeks. He told me so. I will see him in three weeks, but not this week, not next week, the week after. But I will do a talk tomorrow. I will probably either do Gnosticism or Luther. I'll decide which. And um, and Francis, we'll we'll catch up in one more week. We'll definitely do another show next week. Absolutely. Looking forward to it, brother. Thank you. Me too. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Take care. Goodbye. Good God bless.